Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we will learn about the meteor shower known as the Geminis, which occurs during the first two weeks of December. The peak of the shower usually happens between December 13th to 14th, even into the 15th, and we're going to examine the cause of this meteor shower and get practice with identifying the constellation of Gemini, since that is the radiant for this meteor shower. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications about all new videos. If if you want to learn more about stargazing, be sure to visit my new website. We've got some freebies there as well as new seasonal classes that have just been released. The Geminid meteor shower is a great meteor shower to observe because it's fairly consistent each year with the amount of meteors that can be seen. This shower is unique in the sense that it is associated with an asteroid instead of a comet. Now, as a child of the 80s, when I think of asteroids, I think of this Atari game that I played growing up. But in reality, uh, this is what an asteroid would look like as it's traveling through the system. And when objects travel around the sun, as you can see right here, they emit dust and gas and create this dusty trail in their orbits. And then the Earth passes through this orbit and then the particles from this dust trail enter our atmosphere, they burn up and they create these beautiful streaks across the sky. Let's dig a little bit more into the asteroid known as Phaethon 3200. Its orbital period is that of 1.4 years. And here you can see we have an image from the Arecibo Observatory of what 3200 Phaethon looks like. This image was taken, of course, before the collapse of the Arecibo Observatory. And if we look here, we can see the path of this asteroid as it goes around the sun. And remember, Whenever the Earth crosses through its debris, that's when we start to see the beautiful meteors in the shower. And just to review what a meteor is, it's an object that glows due to friction while traveling through the Earth's atmosphere, and it appears as a streak of light in the sky. Now, I am most likely not going to be able to see this meteor shower when I go out tonight, but I've been going out for the past few weeks, and I still am able to capture a few meteors each night that's most likely coming from this particular asteroid. And there is a lot we have been learning about 3200 Phaethon, particularly from the Parker Solar Probe. Now, the Parker Solar Probe is NASA's mission of in which the this probe is going around the sun at very high speeds. In fact, the Parker Solar Probe is the fastest man-made object in the universe at this moment in time. And as this probe is slingshotting around the sun, we have some different instruments that are able to measure some phenomena that are we see occur around the sun and this is one particular phenomenon we're seeing so this picture was taken by the whisper and the whisper is an instrument that records visible light images on the parker solar probe and what you're seeing right here where these dots are marking is this captured the asteroid dust trail that is been created by uh, 3200 Phaethon. So if you want to learn more about Parker Solar Probe, NASA has a great website about it and it shows you where its position is. But it's pretty amazing that we've been able to record this dust trail um, from this particular probe. And here's another image I found that kind of shows you the movement of this asteroid among the stars. And here's another image we have. This is what it looks like as it has traveled through our own skies. So as the Earth is traveling through the debris field, what we end up getting are these particular streaks in the sky, or it may look like something like this. Now, I have observed the Geminid meteor shower before, and um, one time, two years ago, I was lucky enough to see it with perfectly clear skies in Hawaii. And it was the most amazing, it was the most amazing celestial event I've ever seen in my lifetime. Usually I don't get to always see those amazing celestial events like meteor showers or lunar eclipses because the weather may not be great. But this particular one was amazing. And I saw some huge streaks across the sky. I stayed out for over an hour and saw at least 30 different meteors that particular night. So how many, however many meteor showers you are going to see really varies 
um, depending upon where you are in the globe. Let's quickly explore the difference between meteors, meteoroids, meteorites, and meteor showers. So a meteor is when an object glows due to friction while traveling through the Earth's atmosphere. However, a meteoroid is when it's traveling through space. When it burns up on our atmosphere, it's a meteor, but when it hits the ground, it becomes a meteorite. However, a meteor shower are celestial events when the Earth passes through this this path of cosmic dust and debris that could be left over from a comet, or in this case, an asteroid. They're often named after the place they originate from. So for example, the Geminids originate from the constellation Gemini. So if you were to take a bunch of pictures of meteors throughout the night during the Geminid meteor shower and you combined all those images, what you would find is that it appears to originate from this particular point in the sky or in this in this case, um, the Gemini constellation. So here's another picture that shows you the radiant, okay? So this meteor, this picture was taken over the course of a few hours, and you can tell that because you trace these these streaks back to their point of origin, and that is called the radiant. So the radiant is where it appears that these objects are coming from. And if we examine this a little bit closer, this is an idea of what a radiant is like. So a meteors from our perspective will appear randomly in the sky, but if you trace them back to that common origin point, that's called a radiant. A radiant. So we often name the radiant after which constellation it is in. So this gives you the example of the Perseus meteor shower or the Perseids, because this is where the radiant would be. And for Gemini, this is where it would be located, near Pollux, which is one of the bright stars. Here we have Pollux and here we have Castor. So it appears to originate from that point in the sky. And here's another example of of pictures that have been taken over the course of the night. And when you observe, you can trace all these points of light back to one single point. So that's pretty amazing. And that's how meteor showers are different. It's, a, it's an actual event as opposed to an object like a meteor or a meteorite or a meteoroid. Now let's get some quick practice with how to identify Gemini in the sky. Remember, you don't necessarily have to see this constellation to see meteors because the meteors will appear randomly throughout the sky. However, since it is the Geminid meteor shower, it is a good idea just to learn a little bit about this star pattern. So Gemini is one of those few constellations that somewhat looks like what it's supposed to represent, which is a set of twins. And here is the official star map released by the International Astronomical Union. And you can see it's surrounded by lots of bright stars. And the way I find Gemini is to use Orion. I use Orion to guide me towards where Gemini is. So if we have some pictures here, there's a few constellations you can see. Gemini is located right smack in the middle of this constellation. You can even see a meteor going through it. So this is where Gemini is located. You have the bright star Pollux and the bright star Castor. Castor. And um, the way I remember it is that Castor seems to have a cast on his leg. At least a student came up with that and taught that shortcut to me, so I share it with you. The other constellations that we have here are Cancer, we have Canis Minor, and then Auriga. If you want to learn more about any of these constellations, be sure to go see those videos. So if we were to get a little bit more practice with how to find Gemini, we can look for the winter hexagon asterism. And this is a connection of bright stars that forms a hexagon shape, and Gemini is a part of this. So I love this picture because it shows you where Orion is right here and how you can use you can use Rigel, the bright star of Orion, draw a line up through Betelgeuse, and it will lead you right to where Gemini is. And if we were to point out everything here, this is what we have. We have Gemini, we have Auriga, Taurus, Orion, Canis Major, at least a part of it, and Canis Minor right here. So those are the constellations you want to look for when trying to find Gemini. 
Thank you so much for watching. I wish you luck trying to observe the Geminid meteor shower. I hope that the weather is on your side because ultimately for you to be able to see this meteor shower, you definitely need clear skies. I of course am always going to recommend that you seek out dark skies whenever you're trying to find the constellation because it will enhance your stargazing experience. And Gemini is a beautiful constellation. I love being able to find this one in the sky and I'm lucky that in my lifetime I was able to see an amazing Gemini meteor shower. So I wish you luck trying to find this and I hope you have clear skies and keep looking up.